Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Now at 6 a.m., a huge loss for the Kentucky Wildcats. What we've learned about a knee injury that has sidelined Alex Poitras. A close call overnight for a Lexington family after a car crashed into their home. And many students getting a long weekend because of the flu. These stories and breaking news as it happens coming up on WKYT this morning. Good morning and happy Friday to you. I'm Rebecca Smith. It is December 12th. We are creeping closer to Christmas. Hopefully you can get some of that Christmas shopping done this weekend if you have not gotten around to marking everybody off your list. Bill Bryant has the day off. Micah Harris is here, though, in our First Alert Weather Center with a look at what today brings weather-wise. Well, today is going to bring another sunny day. I mean, like we had yesterday. Yesterday was beautiful. As we went toward the afternoon, I think today is going to be the same story. Off towards your weekend, there will be some changes, but they're good changes. So I'll get to that in just a couple of minutes. But there's Live Sky Camera. There's a shot Hamburg. Things look just fine. Nothing on the roadways. No rain, no snow, nothing. You might have to scrap a little uh, scrape a little frost off your windshield. Check out these temperatures. 21 in Danville, 21 Somerset, London, Corbin. I mean, it's really, really cold. And as you're walking out the doors, it's going to be really cold, but it'll be on the cool side this afternoon, right around average for this time of year. Plenty of sunshine ahead. That's going to be our focus of the forecast as we head toward the weekend. But like I said, there are good changes, and I'll explain that coming up in a few minutes. Tough news this morning for the Big Blue Nation. Kentucky junior Alex Poitras will likely miss the rest of the season after tearing his ACL. WKOT's Victor Puente is live at Rupp Arena this morning with the exclusive details on this story. Good morning. We don't have many details about how this injury happened. We do know junior Alex Poitras was hurt during practice. Now, tomorrow's game against North Carolina is, a, is big enough that fans are already camping out near Rupp Arena. You can expect that group to grow throughout the morning, but they most likely won't see Alex Poitras on the court tomorrow. WKYT has confirmed his injury is a torn ACL in his knee. Now, Poitras has started eight games and is averaging 5.5 points, almost four rebounds a game for the undefeated Wildcats. He's also the team's leading free throw shooter at 86%. The UK plays North Carolina here at Rupp Arena tomorrow at 11. The next two games after that are at UCLA and then at Louisville. The UK coach John Calipari will hold his regularly scheduled press conference this afternoon at 2. We hope to learn more about Poitras' injury and his status for the rest of the season. Live in Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. All right, thanks so much, Victor. New this morning, a driver was sighted after crashing into a Lexington house. It happened around midnight on East Tiverton Way off Nicholasville Road. Police say the driver lost control, went through several yards, and eventually hit a house. No one was hurt, but police say it was a close call. Seven people, including two children, were in the home at the time. That home does have some minor cosmetic damage. Well, the state's flu activity level is now at the highest possible. It's so widespread, it's affecting several school districts. WKOT's Mark Barber is live in Lexington with more on this health alert. Good morning to you, Mark. Good morning, Rebecca. From Harrison County to Boyle County, a number of schools are closed today because so many students are getting sick. Tolliver Elementary in Danville, as well as all Harrison County schools, are closed today because school officials say too many students are sick. Now, sickness is also sweeping through many other school districts in central Kentucky. At Paris Elementary in Bourbon County, 20% of their students were out sick yesterday, and 10% of students at Willis Justice Elementary in Clark County were also out yesterday. Over in Mercer County, school officials are asking parents to leave children who appear to be sick at home. We're told many of the students who are ill appear to have flu like symptoms. But schools aren't the only places hit hard. Pulaski County health officials say they are looking into a flu outbreak at a nursing home. As the illness spreads, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is warning that the flu virus strain has mutated and doesn't look like the strain in this year's vaccine. Health officials say that means that the vaccine may not be as effective this year against the flu as it has been compared to previous years. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Well, this morning, police say a missing Eastern Kentucky boy is with his father, who happens to be a murder suspect. The Letcher County Sheriff's Office is looking for Floyd Sexton Jr. and his eight year old son, Nicholas. Sexton is accused in the shooting death of Bill Collins last month in Floyd County. Deputies say he recently let his son call Sexton's mother. The boy told her they're in Mexico. Deputies do not think that that's true. Nicholas's family wants an Amber Alert issued, but deputies say it won't help. They're primarily designed to give the general motoring public and anybody else that's listening uh, a, a vehicle to look for, uh, 
anything like that. And in this case, we have no idea what kind of vehicle he's in or what state. Investigators say they have received some tips in the case. Police say filthy is an understatement. They removed two children from an unfit Southern Kentucky home. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office says deputies went to the home on Highway 25 for a welfare check. They say they found a six year old with head lice sleeping on a box spring. There's also a baby in a crib with extremely dirty diapers. Deputies say the home was also covered in trash. The residence was deplorable. I mean, nasty is not even a good word for it. It was terrible. Deputies arrested the children's mother, Vicki Johnson. She's charged with wanton endangerment and criminal abuse. Deputies say Johnson admitted to them she had driven home drunk from a friend's house shortly before they showed up. A man charged in a Lexington murder case was found guilty on a lesser charge. The Commonwealth's Attorney's Office says a jury convicted Joshua Tevis of reckless homicide. The penalty phase is now underway. Lexington police say Tevis shot John Tell Crocker last year outside Divas Gentlemen's Club on Russell Cave Road. Well, this morning, a Lexington shooting victim will be on his way from the hospital to jail. Ben Sharp was shot in the leg Tuesday night on Manhattan Drive. He told police he was shot when two men broke into the home. When police went back to the home to investigate, they found drug-related evidence inside. Sharp faces several drug-related charges. Well, a minor was flown to the hospital after being badly injured in a strip mine accident. It happened yesterday at the Nally and Hamilton strip mine site in Bell County. Investigators say 35-year-old William Muncie was on a bulldozer when he hit a gas line. That sparked a fire. It caused a, a big flame, you know, it was a, it was a bit, pretty big fire, uh, you know, engulfed the whole dozer, the, the piece of equipment that he was working on. So it was a pretty big fire coming off a, a pretty big line of gas. Well, Muncie had severe burns and a broken bone after he jumped off the bulldozer. He's now being treated at Vanderbilt Hospital in Nashville. A teenager was rushed to the hospital after she was hurt during a Christmas parade. The McGoffin County Fire Chief says the 16-year-old was with one of the floats when somehow her leg got caught up in a tire. We're told her leg was actually run over. She was flown to a West Virginia hospital with what a fire chief describes as non-life-threatening injuries. We're tracking a crime alert in Lexington after a man says he was robbed outside of his home. Happened last night along Rogers Road. Police say the victim was walking to his apartment when two men approached him. Police say those men stole the victim's wallet at gunpoint. The victim thinks he saw the same men at a nearby gas station just minutes before the robbery. A Louisville couple says they're as much in love now as when they got married seven decades ago. Robert and Mildred Richardson got married in 1943 while he was on leave from the Air Force. They say it was love at first sight. The couple has four children. So what's the secret to their happy marriage? They say lots of love and... You just got to learn how to say yes, dear. <laughs> to everything? That'll do it. That'll do it. That's right. And the senior living community where the Richardsons live helped them celebrate their 71st anniversary with a special dinner at the Galt House Hotel, complete with limo ride. Very happy couple there. He seems to have figured it out. Let's check to see how traffic is moving this morning. Here's a look at live drive traffic with Officer Don. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, no wrecks, and, and we just had a look at the north side of town just to start off. And the inner and outer loops of the circle between Boardwalk and Winchester Road moving without any major problems as we get a look outside and, uh, and show you I-75. On the south side, Nicholasville past Man of War, we're making it there okay. And then through the construction zone on the circle itself uh, between Winchester Road, Georgetown, uh, looks like we're good to go. On our Waze map, uh, we can see just normal stuff happening this morning. A couple of stalled cars as our live drivers report on the way in. And slowdowns are getting a little closer to downtown, but uh, nothing unexpected. Now back to you in the studio. All right, thanks so much, John. WKYT this morning is just getting started. Thanks for joining us. A brewery is getting creative for the holidays. See how they're using some leftover items for decoration. And we'll continue to update you on the injury to Kentucky forward Alex Poitras, who is out with a very serious knee injury. Yesterday afternoon started a string of plenty of sunny days ahead. That takes us off into the weekend. There is a change, though, but there's a pretty good change. And I'll explain those temperatures and that change coming up in a few minutes. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Now at 6.30, a Kentucky murder suspect is on the run with his young son. Why his family thinks they may be in Mexico. 
Many students are getting a long weekend because of the flu. And only WKYT has confirmed details about a serious injury for a Kentucky basketball player. These stories and breaking news as it happens coming up on WKYT this morning. Good morning and welcome in. It is Friday, December 12th. I'm Rebecca Smith. Bill Bryant has the day off. And our Friday looking pretty good, especially this weekend, looking a little bit warmer for a December. And for the latest, let's turn to meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, that's going to be the case today, tomorrow, Sunday. All looks well, guys. I mean, we'll have a few clouds Sunday, but other than that, I mean, it's a good looking stretch ahead. 26 there in Georgetown. We have the 20s elsewhere, too, and, and the lowest temperatures actually are in the southern zones as we have cleared out those skies down south uh, for the most part part overnight. Now, planning out your Friday, let's go through it because we hit the afternoon, get the winds out in the southwest, a lot of sunshine. You know those combos always help us out. And this time of year, we're usually in the mid-40s, and we'll be closing in on that by the afternoon. Now, going off towards your weekend, it does get better. There will be changes. There are always changes in weather, but the better for changes heading in toward the weekend. I'll explain that coming up in a few minutes. Tough news this morning for the Big Blue Nation. Kentucky junior Alex Poitras will likely miss the rest of the season after tearing his ACL. WKOT's Victor Puente is live this morning at Rupp Arena with the exclusive details. Well, there are already people camping outside of Rupp Arena. That's a common sight before a big game. Tomorrow's matchup against North Carolina is just that. But UK will most likely be without their starting forward. Now, despite the freezing temperatures, fans are doing their best to get seats for the game against the Tar Heels, but they'll probably see a change in the lineup. We don't have many details about how the injury happened, but we do know junior power forward Alex Poitras was hurt during practice. WKYT has confirmed that injury is a torn ACL in his knee. Poitras has started eight games, is averaging 5.5 points, almost four rebounds a game for the undefeated Wildcats. He's also the team's leading free throw shooter at 86%. The UK plays North Carolina tomorrow at noon on CBS. The next two games after that are UCLA and then at Louisville. And we should know more about the injury this afternoon. UK coach John Calipari will hold his regularly scheduled press conference at 2. We also hope to learn more about Poitras' status for the rest of the season. Live in Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. New this morning, a close call overnight for a Lexington family after a car crashed into their house. Happened around midnight on East Tiverton Way off Nicholasville Road. Police say the driver lost control, went through several yards, and eventually hit a house. Seven people, including two children, were in the home at the time. They told us the crash has them looking for a new place to live. I have a five month old daughter that I am not staying here with. This is not the first time it's happened. I'm going to Walmart tomorrow and getting a for sale sign whether mom likes it or not, and it's going in the front yard. No one was hurt. The home only had some minor damage. Police say the crash was just an accident. Well, the state's flu activity level is now at the highest possible. It's so widespread, it's affecting several school districts. WKWT's Mark Barber is live in Lexington with more on this health alert. Good morning, Rebecca. Because sickness is sweeping through their schools, the Harrison County School District and Tolliver Elementary in Danville are both closed today. Now, students who are exhibiting flu like symptoms are also out sick in many other school districts. In Mercer County, school officials have started asking parents to leave children who appear to be sick at home. At Paris Elementary in Bourbon County, 20% of their students were out sick yesterday, and 10% of the students at Willis Justice Elementary in Clark County were also out yesterday. Over in Pulaski County, illness has spread beyond schools. Health officials there say they are looking into a flu outbreak at a nursing home. This morning, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is warning that there is a new mutated flu virus strain that doesn't look like the strain in this year's flu vaccine. What this may mean is that the vaccine may work less well against flu viruses this year compared to the average year. Now, the CDC says it's still very important to get vaccinated because the vaccine could give some protection against the new flu strain. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. An eastern Kentucky man has been indicted on four counts of murder months after a deadly crash. Police say Sean Harden was drunk when he crashed his truck in Breathitt County. Six people were in the truck at the time. Only Harden and one of his passengers survived. One of the victims was Josh Thorpe. His brother talked to us about his loss. Every time I sit by myself, right there he is. Right there is my little brother. We want Josh back. It's what we really want. That you can't get that back. 
Along with Thor, Pearl Armstrong, Adam Fugit, and Lee Campbell also died in the crash. Hardin faces four counts of murder and one count of assault. This morning, police say a missing Eastern Kentucky boy is with his father, who happens to be a murder suspect. The Letcher County Sheriff's Office looking for Floyd Sexton Jr. and his eight year old son, Nicholas. Sexton is accused in the shooting death of Bill Collins that happened last month in Floyd County. Deputies say he recently let his son call Sexton's mother. The boy told her they are now in Mexico, but deputies do not think that's true. A man who admitted to killing his neighbor's dog will do some jail time. As part of a plea deal, a judge sentenced Robert Ham to five years for animal torture. The sentence will be diverted, but Ham will still have to spend 60 days in jail. Police say Ham put a razor blade and nails in some meat, then dropped it over his Harbin, Hardin County neighbor's fence. One of his neighbor's dogs died. As a part of the plea deal, Ham also has to sell his home and move. Police say they may have a break in the case of some stolen packages in Lexington. Police say an officer following a UPS truck as part of a surveillance detail saw a man take a package from the front porch of a home. He was later arrested during a traffic stop. So far, he hasn't been charged. But police say they did find several packages in, find several packages in his car. After a day of contentious debate on Capitol Hill, the House approved a bill to fund the U.S. government. Susan McGinnis reports from Capitol Hill on what it took to get the bill through and where it goes from here. Before a midnight deadline hit, the House narrowly passed a $1.1 trillion spending bill to keep the government operating through September. On this vote, the A's are 2-6-2-19, the nays are 2 6 the motion is adopted. The vote followed a day of contentious debate on the House floor Thursday. Democrats objected to a provision allowing a tenfold hike in what individuals can contribute to political campaigns and another that eases bank regulations. Stop supporting a bill that would allow the biggest banks in America to rip off the people one more time. Republicans wanted the bill to block funding for the president's executive order on immigration. This lawlessness immigration overreach must not stand. In the end, an unlikely alliance helped push the bill through. President Obama joined Republicans to get Democrats to vote yes. The White House argued this was a better option than what might pass under next year's Republican-controlled Congress. There's no doubt that the amount of leverage that Democrats have on Capitol Hill uh, will be reduced uh, as a result of the Republican gains that were made in the last midterm election. The Senate passed a 48-hour extension of government funding to keep the lights on past midnight and is expected to vote on the full bill in the next few days. Susan McGinnis, CBS News, Washington. While the bill funds the government through the fiscal year, it funds the Department of Homeland Security only through February. Republicans hope that will give them another chance to block the president's immigration policy. Well, Kentucky Governor Steve Bashir is again asking the U.S. Supreme Court to issue a ruling on gay marriage. According to the Courier Journal, the governor's private attorneys joined in an appeal asking the court to rule. Last month, the U.S. Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals upheld gay marriage bans in Kentucky and three other states. Earlier this year, the governor's attorneys appealed a federal judge's decision that struck down Kentucky's ban. But the governor says Kentuckians deserve to have the U.S. Supreme Court decide if gay marriage is a constitutional right. The Christian group building a massive wooden ark in Kentucky is considering a court battle to fight the state's rejection of the project's tax incentives. President Ken Ham of the group Answers in Genesis says losing the tourism tax rebate will be costly, but no decision has been made yet whether to challenge the state in court. Kentucky tourism leaders say the Ark Encounter project is not eligible for tax incentives because employees would be screened on the basis of religion. Well, the candidates for Lexington's next police chief have been named and two currently serve as assistant chiefs. Mark Barnard oversees the Bureau of Investigation. He's a 28-year veteran of the police department. Lawrence Weathers is the assistant chief of the Bureau of Special Operations. He's been on the force for 25 years. Dwayne Depp will also interview for the position. He's currently a member of the Kentucky Parole Board and has more than 24 years' experience in law enforcement. Our final candidate we're talking about, Terry Wilfong. She recently retired as police chief in Greenville, South Carolina, and now lives in Louisville, where she was once an assistant chief. All four candidates will interview with the selection committee next week. 
Well, UK President Dr. Eli Capilouto has spoken out against controversial comments made about some protesters. Groups of students held die-ins on campus to protest the recent lack of indictments against police officers in Missouri and New York. Dr. Capilouto said hateful comments were made about the protesters on social media. In a statement, he said that kind of language has no place in the community. You can see the full statement on WKYT.com. Two University of Kentucky athletes are having their jerseys retired. Gymnastics standout Jenny Hansen will be honored February 20th at the gymnastics meet against Arkansas. And basketball star Tony Delk will be recognized the following day at the men's basketball game against Auburn. Delk championship. He played 10 seasons in the NBA. Hansen broke three NCAA records with eight individual national titles, four titles in one year, and three all around championships. So, uh, congratulations to those two. Let's check to see how traffic is moving this morning. The time now is 641. And here's uh, Officer Don with a look at live draft traffic. Good, Good morning. morning. Downtown looks great with no problems on Main or Vine Street trying to get there. Even High Street past Rose uh, toward up in that area. Things are pretty quiet. Let's get a look outside and we'll show you what we're talking about as you plan to head out the door this morning on this Friday. Hopefully, you'll have a great ride in. With a live look at Nicholasville at Alumni. Now, the construction zone on Lee's Town Road, things continue there. There, but lanes are open and moving. Even on the inner and outer loops of the circle past that point, most of the work over to the side for now, at least. On our Waze map, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing no major issues to deal with. Live drivers on the way in reporting a couple of stalled cars and some slowdowns, like on Wilson Downing approaching Nicholasville Road, waiting at the light there, and also Nicholasville Road from Wilson Downing uh, toward the circle, one of our heavier spots. Now back to you. All right. Thanks so much for joining us on this Friday morning. We have a lot more news on the way. Rudolph is getting busy, and it's not with Prancer and Dancer. Why Wisconsin is seeing an increase in visitors. And we'll have a lot of sunshine for today. Hey, we need it. Temperatures are in the 20s, maybe even some in the teens. Down in the Valley region, down towards south and southeastern Kentucky. We'll get that sunshine today and through the weekend, but the weekend has some pretty good changes. I think the temperatures actually go up. I'll show you that forecast coming up.